Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you George Raft and Harry Carey in Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Millions of Americans will never forget one certain moment of their lives. The moment on December 7th, 1941, when that news came from Pearl Harbor. I was sitting quietly at home, going over a Lux Radio Theater play, when my daughter rushed in from next door to tell me it had happened. If it made such an impression on me, quietly reading a manuscript at home, think what it meant to the crew of a flying fortress when they learned that news a few hours away from Hawaii. It's the story of this crew and their plane, the Mary Ann, that's told tonight in Air Force. Warner Brothers made the motion picture, and it's one of the finest tributes the screen has yet paid to the men of the United States Army Air Forces. Now it's radio's turn, and our cast for Air Force is headed by George Raft and Harry Carey. I think it's only fair to call tonight's play a, a love story, because when a plane has carried men safely through a rain of death and brought them home again, when they've dared the impossible together and done it, there's something between that plane and its crew that's almost, well, almost akin to love. Celestial navigation takes mathematics, and a member of our production staff with a mathematical turn of mind, has just calculated the total of all the audiences that have listened to the Lux Radio Theater for the past nine years. It comes to about four times the population of the whole world. He says that 8,160,000,000 listeners have heard these plays which Lux Flakes brings you each Monday night. Just add up how many times you've listened, and uh, you may account for, for 400 or so yourself. I don't have any figures on how much Lux Flakes it would take to do the washing for eight billion people. But I do know a good many millions of you must be very happy with it because the number's going up all the time. Well, it's time for the takeoff. And here's the curtain for the first act of Air Force, starring George Raft as Joe Winocchi and Harry Carey as Sergeant White. Mather Field, California, December 6th. 1941. Code message to commanding officer, 48th wing, Mayfair Field. Practice flight of B-17s will take off at 2400, December 6th. Destination, Hickam Field, Hawaii. There you are, Captain Quinn Cannon. Thank you, sir. Will we be flying on radio beam all the way? All the way. Are we taking bomb sites along? We're ferrying them fully equipped except for ammunition. Yes, sir. Check your planes thoroughly beyond the hangar line by 10 o'clock. Yes, sir. That was the way it started. A routine flight of Boeing B-17s out of Matha Field. Well, it was supposed to be routine, only it turned out different. Joe Winocki's my name, Sergeant Winocki, assigned to the flight as a gunner. I had orders to report to plane 0114. The Marianne, they called it. So I showed up on the line a couple of minutes before, before 12. They hadn't told us yet where we were going, and I was sort of down on the whole deal. I didn't feel like making that trip. You'll see why later. The Mary Ann was number one on the line. When I walked up, the pilot was checking the plane with the crew chief, an old-time sergeant by the name of White. How's everything going, White? Everything's going fine, sir. I put a new magneto on number two, gear shot. They told me to get it ready for a long trip, but they... They didn't tell me where. Oh, they didn't, huh? No, sir. Can you keep a secret, Sergeant? Yes, sir. That's good. Yes, sir. Captain Buchanan? Yes? Private Chester reporting, sir. Second radio. Oh, uh, this is Sergeant White, your crew chief. Hi, son. How do you do, sir? Glad to have you with us, Chester. Oh, I'm awful glad to be assigned to your ship, sir. I've been hoping to get on a flying fortress ever since I got out of radio school. How long ago was that? Three months ago, sir. But I've had experience. I've been in light bombers. That's fine. Better turn him over to Peterson, Sergeant. I'll be in operations if you want me. Yes, sir. You'll find Peterson inside, son. Gee, it must be a big flight. Nine fortresses. So they say. Do you know, I mean, can you tell me where we're going? Well, uh, can you keep a secret? Well, yes, sir. That's good. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, sir. See you later, son. Hey, uh, hey, are you the crew chief? Yeah, my name's White. Are you the new gunner? Yeah, Wenaki. Joe Wenaki. We've been expecting you, Sergeant. Put your stuff inside. Okay. You're uh, lucky to make this trip, Wenaki. One of our regular gunners on furlough. Oh, I wouldn't say I'm lucky. Oh. No? No. What's lucky about it? Okay. Get going. Looks like everything's okay, Sergeant. I think so, sir. How about the coffee and sandwiches? Got them, sir. I wish we could get hold of an extra supply of oxygen. Already inside the plane, sir. How'd you do that? Six bottles. Haven't got an extra engine, have you? Well, almost enough parts to build one, I guess, sir. <laughs> Good. You know, I'm getting sort of worried about my wife. She said she'd be here by now. Oh, Anaki, come over here. Yeah. Who's this, our new gunner? Yes, sir. This is Captain Quintana. Wenaki, huh? Don't I know you, Sergeant? I think you do, sir. You were at Randolph Field, weren't you? That's right. About two years ago while I was instructing there? That's right. Oh, yes, I remember. You I think the... you remember. Anything else, sir? No, not now. Thanks. I'll get aboard. Pleasant guy, isn't he? Yeah. Anyhow, I guess that new radio man of ours is a pretty good kid. I guess he is. Seems like we're getting him right off the bottle now, sir. Well, we were all pretty young when we started out, Robbie. How old is that kid of yours you talk so much about? 21, sir. Now, uh, where is he stationed? Clarkfield, Manila. They got him on one of those uh, pea shooters. Just got a boost, too. If he gets another bar on his shoulders, you're going to have a bigger head. Can you imagine me saluting my own kid? <laughs> <laughs> You'd pin his ears down if he didn't take it. Oh, Weinberg... You haven't seen Mrs. Quinn Cannon, have you? No, sir, I ain't. Well, guess I've been ditched. You better get aboard, Weinberg. Yes, sir. Guess we'd all better get aboard. Come on, Sergeant. Irish! Irish! There she is, sir. Right with you, honey. Uh, tell Lieutenant Williams to turn the motors over. Yes, sir. Oh, Mary. Oh, Irish. <laughs> it's about time, Mrs. Quinn Cannon. Uh, what happened? Did you have another date? <laughs> Flat tire. Did you ever try to get a taxi out here? I was scared stiff I wouldn't make it. So was I. And I couldn't bring Michael. It was a little too late for him. But he sent you this package. <laughs> what is it? It's his favorite toy. It's quite a sacrifice. A monkey on the string? Mm-hmm. From now on, it, it's your good luck charm. Tell him thanks, will you? Oh, darling, couldn't I stow away? Hey, do you want to get me court-martialed? Uh-huh. It's just a routine flight. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. We'll take time off of that honeymoon. I remember every honeymoon we didn't take. Even the first one. So do I. Anyway, you haven't got much chance to be bored with me. Oh, I'll never be bored with you, Irish. It's been fun, every minute of it. Such good fun that... Well, I guess I'm just lucky. Yeah, me too. Irish. Irish, I... Look, when you go out in the rain, you'll remember to wear your rubbers, won't you? <laughs> sure I will. All ready, sir. Coming. Well, so long, kid. So long. I'll be waiting. Don't forget your good luck charm. Don't worry. Bye. Bye, darling. We're all set, sir. Major Roberts just checked the flight. Good. Everybody in, Sergeant? Everybody in, sir. Lock pins out? Lock pins out, sir. Check controls for three movement. Check. Major Roberts to control tower. Take off instructions for flight of nine B-17s. Sir, is this a local flight? No, this is not a local flight. Okay, to taxi up to north end of ramp. Use runway two, eight, wind west, one, five. Go ahead. Roger. Roberts to flight. All planes follow me. Use runway two, eight, wind west, 15 miles. Take off at 30 second intervals. Let's go. All right, wheels up. Coming up, sir. Well, Robbie, looks like the motors are going to run okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, well, by the way, uh, you can tell the crew now. Our next stop is Hickam Field. <laughs> we took off at 12 on the nose. Once in the air, they told us where we were headed. Hickam Field, Hawaii, next stop. The crew got pretty excited when they heard about it. But me, I figured it was just another trip. The enlisted men were sitting around shooting the breeze. When we passed over San Francisco, the radio kid, Chester, was just about jumping out of his pants. Golly, look at it. Don't it look pretty in the moonlight? Christmas crackers, that's an awful big town, San Francisco. Ah, strictly a whistle stop. 
There's only one city in the USA, and that's New York. Oh, you're just another hometown hick, Weinberg. What's wrong with California? California? The sun shines and nothing ever happens. Before you know it, you're 60 years old. It's no different from New York. My sister's been trying to get out of Brooklyn for the last 40 years. Trying to get out? Don't you know when she's well off? Now, me, I was born in Brooklyn. Yeah, and I want to die in Brooklyn. I tell you, when you cross the Brooklyn Bridge, you're out of this world. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Oh, a smart guy, huh? Me? I'll take Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Why, the grass still grows in the streets. Besides, that ain't your hometown, Peterson. The hayseed's still sticking out of your hair. <laughs> yeah, but I can still milk a cow. I bet you can't. And I'll get mine out of a bottle. That's the closest I ever want to be to a cow. Well, you're sure handy with the old bull. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you know, we're sure getting a break, huh, Wanaki? Why? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, this whole trip. Well, there's a million fellas down there that give anything to be in our shoes right now. Yeah? Why? Oh, I don't mean just this flight, Wanaki. I mean... Well, everything we've got to look forward to. Yeah? Well, how far do you think you'll get as an enlisted man? Oh, a lot of enlisted men get commissions. Look at the training you get. And the experience, too. Look, if you don't go through flying school, you don't race. No, I don't believe that. No? Well, I know, see? Well, what are you in it for? Well, I'm not for long. I've had enough of the Army. I'm getting out next month. Oh, you're getting out, huh? That's right, Sergeant. Well, I'm not. You stick to what you believe in, kid. Don't listen to guys like him. <laughs> What are you going to be in another 20 years, Sergeant? A brigadier? No, but my boy is. Him and me kind of like the old Air Corps. You stay in the box, Chester, and keep right on pitching. Yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, keep right on pitching. You'll be a corporal inside of a year, maybe. Everybody all right in here? Yes, yes sir. sir. Have some coffee, Captain? Thanks, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Want some coffee, Winocky? No, thanks. How's it going, Winocky? All right, sir. Come up front a minute, will you? Sure. Naki, I want to talk to you. That's okay. Can I talk to Sure. <laughs> get it off your chest. I want to get things straight with you. I think I'm straight. I don't know if you are, sir. I think I know what's bothering you. Oh, do you? Yeah. In a way, I don't blame you. You wanted to fly and be a pilot, didn't you? Who doesn't? You had your chance. Did I? Yeah, and you blew it. That's what you think. No, you couldn't make it. You scraped around for a while, and then when the going got tough... Yeah, Aaron, you... you washed me out. I didn't run you into Driscoll's plane and cut his tail off. You washed me out of the school. I could have been flying one of these if it hadn't been for that. It wasn't I who washed you out, Wanaki. It was the board. Yeah, on your recommendation. You lack flying ability. You should have been eliminated sooner. I want you to know that nobody held you responsible for Driscoll's death. Except you, sir. Not me, either. Get that out of your head. Now, look, Wanaki. There are two other men on this ship who washed out as pilots... McMartin's a bombardier, Hauser went in for navigation, and they're both good. You're a good gunner, or you wouldn't have the rating you've got. We need you, just like we need the whole gang. It takes all of us to make this ship function. You played football, Wanagi. You know how one man can gum up the whole works. Now, you got to play ball with us and play the game, or, or I'll have to get rid of you. Nice speech, but my enlistment runs out in three weeks. You're quitting, huh? Yes, sir. Well, that's your privilege. But until that time, you're still in the Army, and don't you forget it. Yes, sir. You know, I'm, I'm sorry for you, Wanaki. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? No, that's all. Yeah, that was me, all right. <laughs> Tough guy. Walking around with a sour puss and a chip on my shoulder. Well, I got knocked off pretty soon by a little monkey of a guy with a smile on his face and a knife in his fist. A guy by the name of Tojo. We were in the radio room when we heard about it. An hour out of Hickam Field. I remember everybody was feeling very gay until we got the news. Hey, Weinberg, lay off, will you? I'm trying to get a weather report no, here. No, I'm sorry, Pete. You got Hickam Field yet, Pete? Yeah, they're on now. Well, fellas, won't be long now before I see old Diamond Edge sticking out of that ocean. Well, that suits Weinberg. Boy, what I wouldn't give to be in a nice traffic jam back home. This wide open space stuff is the bunk. 2,000 miles and I ain't even seen a fish. I kind of like it. Like being on the prairies when I was a kid. You know, it's a funny thing. I never used to was, uh, think there was anything west of Manhattan but New Jersey. Hey, you guys. I was just talking to Lieutenant Hauser, the navigator. Do you know who his father was? Sure. Monk Hauser. Who's that? What do you mean, who's that? 
How old were you in the last war? Well, I was... You were old enough to read, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was old enough to read. What about it? Well, didn't you ever hear of Mark Hauser with Eddie Rickenbacker's outfit? Mark Hauser? Well, sure. Well, why do you know? And he was Lieutenant Hauser's old man? That was him. I knew him. Plenty good till he knocked him down. He sure was. The best. Well, why ain't this kid a pilot, then? Boy started at Randolph. Guess he tried a little too hard. Yeah, like a lot of others. Hey, hey, that's funny. What's funny, Peters? Hickamfield radio went off right in the middle of the weather report. Oh, maybe it faded out. No, it didn't sound like it. Hey, listen. What is it? Wait. Hey, Peters, who you got tuned in? Orson Welles? Shut up. Listen, you. Shut up. Better tell the captain. Radio operator pilot. Go ahead. Sir, Hickam Field's off the air. I, I don't know what I picked up. You can listen in on R2. What's that? Chinese? Number four to Major Roberts. Number four to Major Roberts. Stand by, Irish. I hear it. Keep off the air. 0115 to Hickam Radio. Hickam Radio, answer. Hickam Radio, answer, please. A flight of B-17s to Hickam. Want landing instructions. Hickam Radio, answer, please. Hickam Field to 0115. Silence your radio. Keep away. We're being attacked by enemy aircraft. Land elsewhere. Land elsewhere. Holy smoke, that was a bomb landing. Roberts to flight. Roberts to flight. We're going into emergency landing fields. You know where they are. I'll take the one further north. The rest of you in between, get on the ground and stay there to hear from Hickam. All right, you're on your own. Meant it. Yeah, just about. I think that landing gear shot. We came down on the island of Maui. A posted stamp emergency field set right in the middle of the swamp. The undercarriage was cracked and we sweated over it all day. While we were working, we kept wondering if there were any Japs around. But well, we found out that night. Snipe! There's a Jap in that tree, sir. Are we ready to go, Sergeant? Yes, sir. All right, everybody, in the ship. Get in. I'm going to take a crack at those guys. We're not the inside. Get out of my way. Now, that general took a crack at you. Not without a shot at those dirty... Peterson, help me load this guy in the ship. All right, Wanaki. Take a swallow of this. Come on, wake up. Lego. Lego. How are you feeling, Wanagi? Well, I owe you one for this. Yeah. How far do you think you'd have gotten shooting it out with those guys? Why did it cut you down before you got to first base? Yeah, instead you did. Yeah. We could have had a fine scrap with them snipers. A couple of shots in the right place could have set this ship afire. Use your head, Wanagi, and stop trying to prove something. My job's a gunner. What's yours? Lecturing? No. My job is to keep this ship flying. Zero, one, one, four to Hickam Field. Zero, one, one, four to Hickam Field. Shut off your radio. Stay where you are. Zero, one, one, four to Hickam. Just cleared emergency field on Maui. Have to come down. Okay, give me your call just before you come in. Roger. Pilot the crew, take a good look at Pearl Harbor, men. Maybe it's something you'll want to remember. Hey, gee. Look. Look. It was murder. They murdered those guys. That's what they did. They murdered them. Easy, son. How do you like it, Wenaki? Sunday morning. Sunday morning in hell. Yeah. Now, ain't you glad you're getting out of the army? I saw Hickam Field. It was blazing from one end to the other. They were trying to put it out, not knowing when they'd be hit again. I saw the hospital, too. They were laid out in long rows, 10 deep. Army, Navy, civilians, kids. Kids with bandages over their eyes, crying. Not only because they were hurt, but because their folks weren't around. No. They were in the other section where they laid out the dead. Mommy! Mommy! Doctor, will you come here? Hurry, please. Mommy! 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 <laughs> Wanted to see me, Colonel? Yes. You fellas find something to eat? Yes, sir. Good. Keep your men on hand, Captain. We want this airplane out of here before daylight. 
Sending us back to the mainland, sir? No, you're going to Manila. The Philippines are in bad shape. Our orders are to send them as many B-17s as we can. Think you can make it? Where do we stop to refuel, sir? Wake Island. I can't promise you how long it'll hold out or what you'll find when you get there. Yes, sir. Sergeant White. Yes, sir. How do the engines rev up, Sergeant? Well, number three engine's a little rough, sir. The men are pretty tired to work on it tonight, sir, but we'll overhaul the first thing in the morning. We're taking off in two hours. Sir? I think you're going to see that sun of yours soon. Manila? Yes. Think you can get that engine running right? We'll have a hit and home runs in 90 minutes flat, sir. Good. Tell the crew they can sleep in the next world. <laughs> Is this Wake Island joint? Right there, see? Where? On the map, Warrenberg, the map. Oh, I thought you meant we was there. Not yet. It's about 2,300 miles from Honolulu. And we're going to land on that little dot? Yeah. It's not very big, is it? Like trying to find Buckshot in Central Park. Ah, gee, I wish there were some traffic signs around. We'll do all right. I bet we hit Wake Island right on the nose. Say, Chief, what happens if the Japs have took Wake Island before we get there? You'd learn to control that imagination of yours, Weinberg. Well, I was just asking. Well, don't you know we're not at war? <clears throat> huh? We ain't in a war yet? Hasn't been declared. I don't get it. I don't either. They smear Pearl Harbor, smack Manila, raid Wake, Guam and Midway, and still there ain't no war. And then they send a couple of oily gents to Washington with an olive wreath for the president, while the boys back home slough Uncle Sam over the head with a crowbar. Your Uncle Sam's a pretty tough old gentleman, Woodnarky. Just wait till he gets mad. I hope you don't mind if I get slightly annoyed in the meantime. No, but I didn't expect it of you, Winaki. I thought you only got annoyed at yourself. Well, what's that supposed to mean? You figure it out. All I know is we're getting chased out of places before we can we can even light. We're getting kicked around by a lot of little monkey-faced weasels. And I'm getting sore. You're kind of changing your tune, ain't you? So what if I am? I'd like to do a little chasing myself. Don't worry. You'll get your chance, mister. Yeah. We'll all get our chance. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille presents the second act of Air Force, starring George Raft and Harry Carey. But now, a thought on that summer problem of keeping cool while the thermometer climbs higher and higher. We can't jump in the car and take a drive to cool off. Many of us are spending our vacations right in our own backyard instead of at the seashore or the mountains. But I found a way to be happy in spite of the heat. After my bath, which I take in lukewarm water, not hot or cold, I put on fresh clothes from top to toe. Mmm, that's a wonderful feeling. Then the clothes I've been wearing get their bath in gentle Lux suds. So they'll be fresh and sweet when I want them again. Yes, Lux girls know the charm that daintiness lends. A, a charm that's easy to have. It only takes a minute or two to lux onto things. And when you know that everything you wear is fresh and dainty, well, you feel better. And it's so much better for your undies, too, to lux them after every wearing. They last lots longer when you do. New improved lux flakes are super safe, you know. The mildest, gentlest lux ever made. Super safe for fabrics, super safe for colors. They help pretty under things wear better, stay new looking longer. This new lux comes in the same familiar blue lux box. But now, it's better than ever before. New, improved Lux Flakes. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Air Force, starring George Raft as Joe Winocchi and Harry Carey as Sergeant White. Pilot to crew. Wake Island, dead ahead. Wake Island, fellas. Wake Island. We hit Wake on the nose, all right. But we landed through smoke as thick as a fog bank. So far as I could see, everything on the island was on fire. When we pulled up in front of that hangar, a bunch of Marines crowded around to take a look at us. Hey, gee, look, fellas. There ain't nothing here but Marines. Well, what did you expect to see, soldier? Hey, where are you guys from? Hickam Field. Any more coming? I don't know. Where are you going? Manila. Gang, where are you guys? Here's the Major. One side, man. Now, where's the pilot of this plane? Yes, sir. Good work, Captain. I'm Major Daniels, commanding. Thank you, sir. I'm Quinn Cannon. These are Lieutenants uh, Williams, McMartin, and Raider. I do. Oh, and this is Lieutenant Hauser, our navigator. We're going to put him in a glass case in a museum. You did a good job, Hauser. Well, when I first saw the island, it looked pretty good to me, sir. Me too. Yes, I guess it did at that. It looks better now than it has since Monday. Uh, you mean Sunday, don't you, sir? Monday here was Sunday in Honolulu. You've crossed the date line. Major, could we find some place to bunk down for five or six hours? We haven't had very much sleep. In six hours, you'd better be five and a half hours out of here. Every fire on this island is a beacon. Japs don't have to wait till daylight to come calling. 
My orders are to get you out of here in 20 minutes. 20 minutes? That's right. Well, Robbie, what do you say? Well, we're halfway to Manila now, sir. I don't see any reason why we can't make it the rest of the way. We could uh, use some help, though, sir. Take all the men you need, Sergeant. All right, sir. You first five men. Come with me. Okay, Sergeant. I want to pull the cowling off number three engine. Oh, Quinn Cannon, commander of our Air Force, Major Bagley wants to talk to you. Yes, sir. Come on, Williams. Oh, where is he, sir? In the hospital. He was hit pretty badly. This way, Captain. Well, they really got the Arizona, huh? Yes, sir. Hickam Field was hit just as bad as Pearl Harbor. A lot of fifth column work, too. We got practically nothing off the ground, sir. Yeah. I've studied all the wars in history, gentlemen. I've never come across a dirtier piece of treachery. How many airplanes have you got, Major Begley? A week ago, we didn't have any. A few days ago, they flew in 12 fighters from one of the carriers. Eight of them were destroyed on the ground after they came in from patrol. Only four left, sir? Only two. One of those can't fly. But those four groomers took on 16 nips this afternoon. Shut down plenty of them, too. I, uh, I suppose the Japs will be back, Major. What are you going to do then? Well, uh, we got a lad catching a few winks of sleep out there. That'll take them on all single-handed. Lieutenant Rose. Oh, Bertie Rose? That's him. Oh, you remember Rose, don't you, Irish? Sure, a little guy. Everybody kidded him about his size. About that high? Yeah, that's him. Well, could we talk to him, sir, before we take off? Well, uh, I'll tell him you wanted to see him. He needs a rest. See, we may have to roust him out any minute, and he hasn't had much of a chance to sleep lately. Ship's ready, sir. All right, Sergeant. Well, good luck to you. It's been nice seeing you, boys. Go out and blast those Japs. Teach him that treachery can't win no matter how much of a head start it has. You don't figure you can hold out, sir? No. But we've got 400 Marines and they're fighting mad. There's going to be some Jap tail feathers flying around this island or I'm crazy. Major Bagley, can't we fly you out, sir? You and the rest of the wounded? Uh, no, thanks. I'm fine here. I'm not worth my weight in gasoline. Me or anybody else. I need that ship of yours in Manila. Get it there. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way... You see my old boss, General MacArthur. Tell him no matter what the news is, we'll be in here pitching till they strike us out. So long, and I'll, I'll see you all somewhere. Yes, sir. We'll be seeing you, sir. All right, you Marines, clear the field, will you? Ah, come on, come on, soldier. Be a regular guy. Oh, but look, What's your name, soldier? Weinberg. Weinberg? They're from Brooklyn, ain't you? Yeah, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. I, I know it. Now, come on, Brooklyn. Do like we say, will you? Oh, but that's against regulations, pal. I can't take no dog on board with me. Now, you Marine ah, guys Ah, know... yeah, sure you can. It's just a little dog. And you don't want to get me busted, do you? you oh, Marine you're guys... not going to get busted. He's crane, too. Look, Tripoli, do you like Mr. Moto? <laughs> yeah, there. <laughs> See? Hey, Wanaki. That's cute, ain't it? Yeah, he's smart, all right. Well, what do you say, Brooklyn? Come on, soldier. Take him along with you. He'll only get in trouble here. Well, gee, I'd like to pull us honest, but... Oh, all right. Here goes my promotion. Ha, <laughs> ha, That's a good fella. Hey, here comes Quick Cannon. Duck that door, quick. Well, goodbye, sir. Good luck. The same to you, boys. Anything we can do for you in Manila, Major Daniels? Well, yes. You might send us some more Japs. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> What's in that bag? I don't know, Sergeant. Ah, Carry ah, it out. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, open that bag. Ah, why, ah. why, it's ah, a door. Ah. Who belongs to this? Well, look at that. Is that your dog, Chief? No, it ain't my dog. What kind of a crew chief do you think I am? Well, I anyway. Was, I was just asking. Who brought him on board? Well, uh, maybe he walked on. And tied himself in a sack. Come on, who did it, Peterson? I didn't. You want Bert? Well, maybe the Marines done it. Oh, sure. If I'm not mistaken, they had a dog. And his name was Rope. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, his name was Tripoli. Talk fast. And he had a cute trick. What? Well, look, uh, uh, let's see if this is him. Look here, Tripoli. What do you think of this Mr. Moto? Oh. There you are. It's the same dog. Listen, I know the dog came from Wake Island, and I know you brought him on board. Me? Oh, gee. You know you ought to get busted. Wait buddy. a minute. Why don't you ask me, Sergeant? Huh? I did it. You? I brought them out on board myself. Yeah, me. Now listen, Joe. Shut up. You ought to know better than that to do a trick like that, Wenaki. Why? Because it's against regulations. Oh, what difference does it make? Regulations. You know why this dog is here. And you know what chance those Marines got back on that island. So do they. That's why they give us this dog. Now go on up front and report me. 
I've been busted out before, and I'm used to it. Oh, Joe, shut up. I've got a half a mind to do that, mister. Well, go ahead. What are you waiting for? What's the matter back here? Trouble, Sergeant? Oh, uh, 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 no, sir. I... I uh... ah! that a dog? Well, uh, yes, sir. I... What is this, Sergeant Noah's Ark? I'm sorry, sir. Who brought him on this airplane? Well, he, he, he could have jumped on, sir. Yeah, he could have flown in the window, too, but he didn't. No, sir, he, uh, he didn't. You know it's against regulations? Yes, sir. And you don't know who did it? Well, I... I At I... least you didn't see anybody do it? No, sir, I didn't. Well, we can't very well throw him out now, can we? We could take care of him, sir. We can? Yes, sir. Who back here likes dogs? Why, I think, uh... I think Wanaki and Weinberg like dogs, sir. Wanaki, huh? Well, Wanaki, would you like to take care of him? Yes, sir. All right, he's your responsibility. Get rid of him at Clark Field. Yes, sir. Well, that's that. Oh, uh, thanks, White. For what? Well, for not telling him how the pup got aboard. Forget it. But I'm telling you to take care of that pup. And if he don't behave himself, you can take care of that too, see? <laughs> Zero, one, one, four to Clark Field. Zero, one, one, four to Clark Field. Clark Field to zero, one, one, four. What's your position? Go ahead. We're about four miles northeast of the field. Two thousand. What are your landing instructions? We've only got one runway, north to south. It's pretty rough. The Japs just had a picnic. Uh, wait a minute. Someday we're going to find a field that's still flat. Do not land. Keep your altitude. Do not land. Sorry. Have to come straight in. I'm running out of fuel. All right. Come in low over the fence. South end. Cut it close to the wire. You have much room. Tractors working down the middle of the runway. Right. Coming in. Every field was the same. All the hangars burning. The sky lit up for miles around. I got to thinking the whole world was on fire. For all we knew, maybe it was. Well, we came in low over the fence, all right. In fact, we even took a piece of the fence with us. <laughs> Hiya, Major Mallory. Say, when we were at Kelly Field, didn't I teach you how to get over a fence? Well, that's one way to stop quick. I just cut it too fine. <laughs> Not bad anyway, after 7,000 consecutive miles. Well, you did a great job, all of you. Thanks. Robbie, any damage? Tailwheel clear, sir. No damage. Good. Any orders, Major? Take her down the end and get her a full load of gas. Drop your extra tanks and get ready for action. Okay, Major. The Japs have been hitting us with 60 bombers at a clip. You've got to be ready to take off at any time. You can see yourself. You're wide open on the ground. Oh, yes. Colonel Blake wants to see you. I'll pick you up in a little while. All right, sir. Hauser, you got any sectional maps around here? Hey. Hey, Wanaki. Yeah? You go find the line chief and see if he'll give you a transfer. We'll get somebody to replace you. But, Sergeant... All right. Get going. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Wanaki, you want to get out of this crew? Well, uh... That's what you want me to do, isn't it, sir? Not necessarily. You mean you'll take all that stuff I've been handing you? Well, we all make mistakes. Well, I'm beginning to realize that myself, sir. I, I want to Turn that you... dog over to the nearest Marine and get back here and check those guns. Give him a good going over. Yes, sir. You ready as quick as you can, Sergeant. Oh, well, Captain. Uh, excuse me, sir. Would you, uh, would you see if you could find out something about my boy? Sure I will, Robbie. I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, sir. Hey, uh, hey, buddy. Any Marines around here? Yeah, if there was more around, the place would be in better shape. Well, you a Marine? Eh, uh, what's it to you? Yeah, you're a Marine, all right. Here, I got something for you. Hey, what's this, a dog? Yeah, your outfit on weight gave him to us to deliver. We just landed. His name is Tripley. Feed him good. He'll eat like a company commander. Come on, mutt. <laughs> That's the situation as it stands right now, Captain. I've given you the facts and I've given them to you straight. Yes, sir. We've taken an awful licking here because we were caught on the ground. Since then, they've outnumbered us ten to one. Yet every time we've been up against them, they've lost five to our one. In other words, if we were anywhere near equal, we could lick them. The record proves it. And from now on, our job's to keep on fighting with what we've got until we can get enough airplanes to blast them off the earth. Yes, sir. How long since you've had any sleep, Captain? We haven't had much time for that, sir. When did you leave the mainland? Saturday night. Three days and three nights continuous flying. You've done a good job. I've got a good crew, sir. Yeah, I can believe it. Excuse me, Colonel. What did you find, Moran? Well, the PT boat was right. It does look like an invasion fleet. What's in it? There's a big transport and a tanker. They got a battleship, a cruiser, and a couple of destroyers with Where? it. Where? About 40 miles off in Guyon, last time I saw them, sir. I didn't have much time to stick around. 
The sky suddenly got full of zeros, so I headed for home. I've marked her position and course on this chart, right here. A flight of Boeing B-17s could give them a nice party. Mm. We haven't got a flight of B-17s. You've got one, sir, loading up now. You want to tackle it? Yes, sir. All right. Study this chart first. Take your time and don't take any chances. Moran will give you all the dope he can. And good luck to you. Oh, excuse me, sir. There's one more thing. I told our crew chief I'd find out about his son, Lieutenant White. Danny White. Can you tell me anything about him, sir? Yes. Yes, I can. He was killed the first day. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Here are his things. His watch and cigarette case. Give these to old Robbie, will you? I've known him for a long time. How'd it happen, sir? Captain Anderson out in the other office can tell you more about it than I can. He saw the whole thing happen. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Come on, boys. Finish up there. We got to get in the air. Ready, Sergeant? Just about, sir. Oh, uh, Captain, did you find out anything about my boy, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Here. These were his things, Robbie. The CO asked me to give them to you. Oh. Danny's thing. Oh, I see. How did it happen, sir? He was trying to take his flight off during the first raid. Before he could get his wheels off the ground, they hit the runway right in front of him with a big one. You mean... He didn't even get into the air. No. A watch, cigarette case, and his bare wings. It's not much to show for 20 years, is it, sir? No, Robbie. Get that airplane off the ground. All right, Sergeant. Let's go. <clears throat> yes, sir. Pull that dolly out. Close the bomb bay. How many loaded? Three, sir, all big ones. Thousand pounders? Yes, sir. Good. Come on. Get out, boys. Roll the three. Come on, men. Come on. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with George Raft and Harry Carey for the third act of Air Force. Now, here's Sally coming to the microphone. Maybe it's the weather that's gone to our heads. Anyway, we have a rhyme for you. The title of it is Better Be Safe Than Sorry. I'm sorry, the sales lady says with a sigh, for those days that we just can't forget. When the stores were all full of such good things to buy, we could hardly decide what to get. I'm sorry, all out. We can't get any more. You'll have to make what you have do. Well, it's in a good cause, so we never get sore. But it brings up some new problems, too. It's all very well to say, make your things last. We're willing to try, goodness knows. We'd love longer wear than we got in the past from dresses and undies and hose. Well, here comes a tip that gets three rousing cheers from Mom and from Sis and Dad, too. Instead of assaulting the grime that adheres with a strong wash day soap, as some do, get the habit of luxing all washable things. Lux is gentle as gentle can be. Those rich peppy suds just make the dirt take wings. And things thrive on Lux Care, believe me. Mother beams at the way colored linens stay bright. Sis gets far fewer runs in her hose. But here is the point that is Dad's chief delight. Lux is thrifty, saves money and clothes. New improved Lux is the mildest yet made. Let it help you join the victory parade. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We have a surprise guest tonight... One of the most famous personalities the screen has ever known. You'll meet her after the play. But now here's the third act of Air Force, starring George Raft and Harry Carey. Pilot to crew. There's a flock of zeros ahead about two o'clock. Make it count, boys. We ran into plenty of grief that day. The Japs knew we didn't have a tail gun and zeros buzzed around our rear end like a swarm of bees. But we didn't do so bad. We got about six before they got us. Yeah, they got us finally. They winged one right through the cockpit, and Captain Quintanon folded up over the controls. He was still conscious, but he knew we were licked. 
For the time, anyhow. Irish, are you hurt? Is it bad, Irish? Yeah, I guess so. What's the matter with that oil line? Oh, it's burning. All right, we'll have to bail out. Pilot to crew. Abandoned ship. But look, Irish... Tommy, get rid of your bomb site. You and Monk go out through the bomb bay. Irish, what about you? Get him gone. I'll use the escape hatch. I know, Go but on, you... get out, get out. That door open. Come on, Peterson. You first. Yes, sir. See you later, guys. I hope... Weinberg, you're next. I don't think I'm going to like this. Go on, get out. All right, next. Wernicke. Come on. Go ahead, I'm coming. Okay. Keep moving, guys. Come on. I didn't go out of the ship. I waited till they all went over the side, and then I crawled up to the cockpit. Oh, it wasn't that I wanted to be a hero or anything. I just had to get my mitts on those controls. That was what I worked and sweated for at Randolph. To feel that big, beautiful ship under my hands. To feel her power. I never had the chance again, so I took it. She came out of the spin like an angel. And I turned her and headed for Clark Field. One of her motors was on fire. But I knew she'd make it. She had the stuff. Some guy has called those ships queens. Well, brother, he ain't kidding. Zero, one, one, four to Clark Field. Zero, one, one, four to Clark Field. Emergency landing. Emergency landing. Clark Field to zero, one, one, four. Get your wheels down. Get your wheels down. I can't. The gear's jammed. It won't move. Here I come. about that ship, Sergeant? What's her condition? Well, I counted over a hundred bullet holes in her, sir. Two motors hit, props are bent, controls in a mess, wheels damaged. I don't see how they brought her down in one piece. Mm, neither do I. I suppose if we had ten days and plenty of spare parts, we might make her fly again. I don't know that we'll have 24 hours. Uh, looks like we'll have to ride off the Mary Ann. Send out a demolition squad to burn her. Yes, sir. What about the crew? Oh, they all got back all right, sir. Where are they now? Over at the hospital, sir. Captain Quincannon asked to see them. How is he? Not a chance, sir. Oh, too bad. He's over here. Don't stay too long, please. We're pretty busy. Yes, ma'am. Irish. Hi, Irish. Oh, it's good to see you. Hiya, fellas. Hiya, Chief. Is Wanaki here? Yes, sir. Wanaki, they told me... You brought her in. You did, sir. She came in herself. I just sat there. It was a good job. She's all right, huh? Mary Ann's all right, isn't she? Robbie. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. She, she's all right. She'll fly again. Sure. Sure she will, Skip. Sure. What, what's wrong with her, Robbie? She, she's uh, she's going to be all right, sir. Tell me, Robbie. Oh, uh, props, gear... Wink tip. Just the tip? Well, it's a... Yes, sir, a couple of days, that's all. Two days? Two days, yes, sir. But she... She will fly again? Uh, yeah, that's sure, sir. That's fine. Get as many men as you need, Robbie. The colonel will give them to you. I'll get a... Clarence. We'll be right away. we got to hurry. Hey, nurse. Nurse! Easy, Irish. Easy. Get the doctor right away. Oh, no, no, no. The doctor can't go. Regulations. Okay. Ready? Start him, Bill. Sure, Irish. Everybody in, Chief? All in, sir. Doors closed? Yes, sir. Here we go. Lock them. Locked. Wheels up. Coming up, sir. Sounds like they're going to run all right, Robbie. Yes, sir. Pilot. The navigator. Go ahead. What? What's our course? It's... It's due east, Skipper. Due east? What? That... That's right into... The sunrise. Where is he? Which one? Here, Major. Stand back, please. All right. That's all, boys. Sorry. Well, let's get going, fellas. We got a lot of work to do.
We know what we had to do. We were going to get the Marianne into the air again. For Captain Quinn Cannon. All day we sweated over it. We stole parts and gasoline. And then, towards night, the demolition squad showed up. They had their orders to burn her. All right, boys. Get that live ammunition out of there. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're going to burn this plane? And the colonel said to burn it, so she's going to burn. You better get your stuff out, Sarge. Okay, boys, bring in the gas. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Get this gasoline away from that airplane. I can't help it, boys. Hey, hey, Butch! Weinberg, how are you? I thought you were still on the streetcar in Jersey. I wished I was, Weinberg. I wished I was. Lieutenant... Look, Johnny Williams. Hey, look, you ain't gonna burn that airplane, Butch. But I got orders. Come on, beat it. I never enlisted to be no go fireman. Go on, go I... on. Weinberg. Yes, sir? If you know this firebug, get him out of here before he gets hurt. I, I don't want to do it, Sarge, but orders is orders. Hey, what's all this? What orders? To burn the plane. Who gave them to you? The CO, that's who. Yeah, well, you tell that CO to take a... Uh, take a look at this airplane. I am looking at it. Uh, sorry, sir, I didn't see you. Apparently not. Well, what I meant to say was, sir, that there's no reason to burn this airplane. No, sir, she's going to be as good as new. Better, sir. We're going to rig a tail gun on her. Sure, we've been working on her all night, sir. She'll fly when we get through with her, sir. By that time, we won't have this field. I know, but... Now, look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But right now, our job's to destroy everything that'll be of use to those Japs. You can't get that thing ready in time to... We can, sir. Uh... Bomb site still in this airplane? Yes, sir, the one we borrowed, but we won't let him take it, sir. Give us a chance, sir, please. Well, I'd like to, boys, but oh, I... excuse me, sir. I've been in this man's army over 20 years, sir, and I, I, I've never asked a favor yet. If you'll only just... We'll get her off, sir. Yes, sir, we'll burn ourselves if we can't make it. I'll give you my word. Please, sir. You men are crazy. You know what'll happen if the Japs move in while you're still on the ground? I think we do, sir. All the rest of you? Yes, yes sir. sir. And you'll burn her yourselves? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. All right. It's your funeral. Go ahead. All right, now, boys, get on this lift. Come on, now, all together. Heave. Well, there she is, sir. I've got the tail gun rigged. Think there's room enough in there to work? Sure. Okay. Boy, the Japs will really get a surprise when they come on the tail of this B-17. Come on. That's got her. Now get a couple of planks across here, will you, boys? Sounds like they're getting closer, sir. They are. We'll have to be out of here by daylight. We will, sir. It's daylight now, sir. Weinberg's just finished number three motor. Number four, sir. Four, good. Watch that gas, boys. Handle it carefully. Keep them level. Hey, look. Here they come. Cap planes. Hurry up there. Hurry up. They spotted us. Get those machine guns out. Got them, sir. Let them come. Come on, Jeff. They're going to dive. Keep under cover, men. Get that cowling off. Here they come. Get come on. Them. Hurry it up. Hey, Sarge, that'll have to be enough gas. Get everything clear to take her off. Yes, sir. Hold that gas. Hold that gas. Come on, some of you guys get her out by the front wheels. Step on it. Hauser, get inside and start her up as soon as you turn around. Wenaki, get inside on the guns. Come on, Peterson. Try and hold them off till we're up. All right, Tommy, take care of the bomb site. Make sure you don't count a half stand by this gasoline. I won't start. We'll have the burner. All right, come on, let's go. Shove her. Come on. Shove her straight back. Come on, shove her. Now get around, boys. Come on. A little more. Come on. Come on. There she goes. All right, Weinberg, get inside. Everybody inside. Here we go. We made it all right. All the way to Darwin. Dropping a load of eggs on an invasion fleet off Australia. Straight arming zeros all over the place. They didn't know we had a stinger in our tail now. When we hit them, they busted wide open, like a cloud of dust. Yeah, we made it. The Marianne lived to fight again. She's fighting right now. And someday, whether it's this year or next, whenever it is, she'll be in that big fight over Tokyo, playing the Star Spangled Banner for the Nips with two-ton bombs. Now, before our stars return to the microphone, a word about that Victory Garden of yours. You may be enjoying those wonderful fresh vegetables and fruits now. They taste mighty good, don't they? But they will next winter, too, if you preserve them now. But don't forget, and here's where Lux Flakes come into the picture, don't forget that the jars you use must be spotlessly clean. 
Wash them in rich, hot Lux suds and rinse them well. That's a lot more effective in removing bacteria than rinsing in water alone. Here's what a Department of Agriculture bulletin says. Wash the jars and tops in hot, soapy water and rinse. Place them in a pan of warm water with a rack or cloth in the bottom to prevent bumping. Bring to the boiling point and keep hot until required. Then it goes on to say that whether you boil the jars to sterilize them depends on the canning method you're using. Anyhow, lux the jars first. They'll come out sparkling clean just as your dishes do. And lux suds leave no soapy or perfume odor as some soaps do. Incidentally, here's something you've probably noticed about using Lux for dishes. You don't get any gummy lumps of undissolved soap. Even in hard water, new improved Lux flakes dissolve quickly and completely. Give you rich, long-lasting suds that make dishwashing pleasanter, easier, and that leave hands soft and smooth. Yes, Lux flakes are better than ever for dishes, for every soap and water job. New improved Lux flakes. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. George Raft and Harry Carey take their curtain calls from the stage of the Lux Radio Theater now. But in England, it's almost 3 a.m. In the Solomon Islands, it's 2 p.m. And the flying fortresses of the United States Army Air Force are getting ready to take another kind of curtain call. And those flying fortresses were the real stars of tonight's play, C.B. There's no mistake about that. And it's a privilege for me to have a part in your broadcast of Air Force. Me too, C.B. You know, I've always wanted to work for you because I figured you must be the only man in Hollywood is, who's been here longer than I have. <laughs> I thought I remembered seeing you in a cowboy hat when I got off the train in 1913, Harry. At any rate, I, I guess we're both among the early settlers. You were probably in grammar school at the time, George. And dreaming of being able to ride and rope like Harry Carey. Oh, uh, where did you learn to handle horses, Harry? Driving a horse car in the Bronx. Now, listen, uh... (laughs) I'm a New York boy. You can't kid me. They've got subways in the Bronx. A lad like you wouldn't know about such things, George. I rode most of the horse cars in New York when I was a boy. Where was your run, Harry? Well, C.B., uh, my dad owned the line that ran from City Island over to Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx. Remember it? (laughs) Remember it? (laughs) My friend, you're looking at one of your old customers. Well, uh, have you fellas ever ridden on the subway? And don't tell me you two dug it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George. But the subway doesn't have the romance of the horse car or the atmosphere. Atmosphere. That was my horse car, all right, you rode on. <laughs> so... <laughs> so much for the old days, Harry. We have a special guest in the Lux Radio Theater tonight. You both know her well, because she's one of the really great ladies of the screen. I directed her in several pictures. In fact, I I once acted with her in a Broadway play. She's one of the people who are responsible for making motion pictures a medium of entertainment for millions the world over. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Mary Pickford. Thank you, Cecil. I enjoyed the play so much. And tonight I'm here as a member of the Phi Beta Fraternity, an organization which has always taken a great interest in the Lux Radio Theater. It's the Phi Beta Fraternity of Music, Speech, Drama, and the Dance, founded 31 years ago to promote the best in music and the arts. We try for the best in drama here every week, Mary. And how great your achievement has been, Cecil, is proved by a nationwide vote of the members of the Phi Beta Fraternity. They have voted the Lux Radio Theater the Outstanding Dramatic Program of 1943. And as a symbol of that distinction, I'd like to present you with this trophy. There. (laughs) Yes, sir. National Phi Beta Radio Award presented to the Lux Radio Theater for excellence in speech in 1943. This trophy shows our appreciation of your program, but more than that, it shows the gratitude of millions for the enjoyment you bring to us each Monday night. Our best wishes go with it, Cecil. 
this is a very great honor for the Lux Radio Theater. And presented by you, Mary, it, it means even more. That's a darn nice trophy Mary brought, too, C.B. Congratulations, C.B. And now it's time for us to say goodnight. Good night. Good night. Good, good night. We told you a story of the Army Air Forces tonight. But we have a word from the Navy, too. It's for the women in the audience. Secretary Knox said the other day that he needs many, many more of you in the waves. You see, the girls who've joined the waves have done such a wonderful job that the secretary can release a man for combat duty every time another wave enlists. It's as simple as that. So why don't you talk to your local naval recruiting office about it. Once more, the time has come for this curtain to fall on the close of a season. We'll miss meeting you on Monday night, and we hope you'll miss us. I've tried many times to visualize this audience. Not a gigantic theater stretching all the way across the country with row upon row of people disappearing into the distance, but millions of little groups gathered around their family firesides for this Monday night date of ours. The big parade of stars and plays which has passed in review before this microphone during the last nine years has all been made possible by you, by your loyalty to the products behind this theater, Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap. That's why we'll be back with you again on September the 13th with one of the finest bills we've ever had on an opening night, or any other night. For the 10th season of the Lux Radio Theater, we'll open with the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit, Random Harvest. And our stars will be Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson. <laughs> this summer, this summer, Gary Cooper and I will keep busy over at Paramount filming the saga of an American country doctor who made history in Java, the story of Dr. Wassell. Besides that, I'm looking forward to some pleasant hours of play reading and casting for the Lux Radio Theater next autumn. Many things may happen before we meet across these footlights again, for destiny is on the march. Great events are at hand. The war is not yet won, but now at least, we can see the bright beacon of victory shining in the distance. And it's shining brighter than ever tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes and Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again on Monday, September the 13th, when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman and Greer Garson in Random Harvest. Until then... This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. George Raft's current picture is the Warner Brothers production, Background to Danger. Harry Carey is now making a 20th Century Fox picture, Happy Land, based on the book by McKinley Cantor. Heard in tonight's play were Fred Mackay as Quinn Cannon, Eddie Marr as Weinberg, Art Gilmore as Williams, Stanley Farrar as Peterson, Cliff Clark as commanding officer, and Leo Cleary, Vicki Lang, Mel Blank, Charles Calvert, Dwayne Thompson, Charles Seal, Louise Arthur, Wally Mayer, Earl Keane, Bill Sloan, Peter Chong, Howard McNear, Bobby Larson, Herb Vigran, Mac Gray, and Bob Haynes. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been John M. Kennedy. Food shortages don't worry me. I'm making sure my family gets enough vitamins and minerals this summer. I just give them Vims. You see, Vims are scientifically designed to help make meals complete in spite of food shortages. Right. For pleasant-tasting Vims tablets give you all the essential vitamins and all the minerals commonly lacking. Start taking Vims this summer. Ask for Vims at your druggist. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Vims. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.